So hello and good evening, this is Ruth Pozzuolo from Curval.com and if you are hearing my voice and hear me saying Dax Fridays, you know that is the end of the week. And uh, this week I have a special video for you. This is actually a video that I wish somebody had done for me when I started Dax. And what we are going to do is not going through a function, but we're going to reverse engineer a DAX measure. If you don't know what reverse engineer means, it's basically that we are going to take a DAX measure that somebody has done and we're going to try to understand it. So we're going to deconstruct it and put it in pieces to see how the measure works. And I'm sure that you've asked for help in the Power BI community. I have done, definitely. And, uh, you know, when you do, sometimes you get back a DAX measure and you say, oh my God, thank you. I mean, it works, it's perfect, but you understand nothing. And it is good to understand because then you learn and also you will be able to adapt that calculation or that measure to your exact model because sometimes it doesn't really work that way that you just copy paste. So now I'm making a very long introduction, but what we will do is actually go through a DAX measure and see how it is built so we can learn from it. And you can use this method from any measure. Okay, so let's begin the video. Okay, so here we are in the Power BI community and I have picked uh, one of the questions that somebody asked, in this case is Leroy773. And uh, we're actually going to go through the case and deconstruct the DAC, DAX measure that he got. So this is his case. Uh, what we are going to do is, uh, this is how his model looks like. And he has uh, some dates and then some values. And what he would like to know is what is the difference between this date and this date, this date and this date, this date and this date, and so on, right? And because they are in rows and not in columns, he doesn't know how to do it. So he says, okay, could you please help me um, to understand, to calculate the duration between the different dates? And then we have here somebody at Microsoft that says, okay, yes, uh, this is the DAX measure. And I'm sure he copied it, he put it in his model, it worked, and then moved on. But what I'm going to do today is we're going to deconstruct this measure to see how that works. So Lydia actually provided a Power BI file as an example, and I just downloaded this and created my own, uh, you know, my own video for um, the explanation for how to deconstruct the example. So you can download the Power BI file from here. Okay. So let's go back to Power BI and see how this is done. So here it is, the Power BI file. Um, nothing is, of course, in here because this is just meant for to show the calculation. Here it is, the um, dates column. I will show what the index is, and here is the actual uh, DAX measure that um, Lydia sh showed uh, or shared with Jared. So let's go back and see what Lydia says. She says, okay, based on your description, you want to compare your current row with the previous row. In that case, first go to the query editor and add an index query and then paste this tax formula. So if we go to the edit to the query editor of Power Query, in here you will see that Lydia created the column with the dates. The other stuff is not relevant. And then added an index. So here you go to add column and then add index column and uh, that was it and then loaded it into power bi and then it says okay this is the formula that you need and you get this beef right so, oh, okay so what is this doing you see a few things you see a date diff you see an if statement and you see a lookup value so when you are deconstructing a DAX measure, you start always from inside to out. So if you want to know how this DAX measure works, the first thing you need to do is to go to the inner core of the measure. And in this case, 
it is actually if we put it like this you have a date div and you can see here the parentheses so this is the outer part of the DAX measure if you go to the next function you see that this is another one and this is not the one because we want to go from inside to out so the first thing that happens is this lookup value you see so what we're going to do is simply we're going to copy lookup value and then go to home new column and um, we are going to write here lookup value as the name and then we just copy it and then you get something back so what do you get you get 19th of, of october on the next row 14th on the next row 21 on the next row and this is basically what you want right because if you are going to do this minus this you can do now this minus this this minus this so this is was a very uh, intelligent way to, to solve this issue so to understand this we need to go to look at value and see what that is so let's check what microsoft says about the lookup value and here's what you have you have a lookup value you have a result column name you have a search column name and search value and this is what happens it says it returns the value of column name so when this is evaluated you will get as a result the a value from the result column name and this is for the row that meets all the criteria specified by search column name and search value. So you have a column where the function should go and search, and then you have a value that should be searched for. And when that row is identified, it will return the value that is on that same row. And probably I'm speaking Chinese, but don't worry. We will go back to Power BI and I'll show you what that is. Okay, so this is how we read. It says, go to table five in column index. So this one, so table five is the name of that table. So go to index column, which is in here. Remember you read measures from the inside out. So we're, in this case, we read from here. It says, go to the column index and search for a value where index is index minus one. So we are in the first row and then search for a value that is zero minus one and is minus one and it doesn't find anything here and it says return table five column one and because there is no index minus one it returns nothing it ignores it and then it goes to the next row then it said okay in the index column do index minus one so one minus one and one minus one is zero so now we find the row and then it says, OK, so give me the, the equivalent in column one, which is the 19th of October. And then it puts it there. So we do it one more time. In the column, index column, get index. Now we are here. Get index minus one. So this is two minus one. And then two minus one is one. So it goes here. That's the result and return the corresponding row from column one, which is the 14th of October. So, whoops, 14th of October. So you see how it works, right? It, this is like super cool. So now you have a column that has the date that you want on another column. So you can now actually do these minus these. So you might be asking, okay, so if I can now do column one minus minus lookup value, why do I have all these complicated things? Okay, that's a good question to have. And I think you should actually experiment with the messages that you get. So let's do that. We go to modeling, we say new column, and I said, I can do this better. I do date div. And how does date div work? Let's give it a second. So date div is actually a very simple measure. You have a start date. You have an end date and then you have an interval. 
So the interval could be in seconds, in minutes, in hours. So give me the difference between this date and this date in seconds or in hours or whatever. Okay, so let's go back. To so now we know how date diff works. So we need a start date, of course, is our column one. We need an end date, is our new found lookup value uh, column. And then we want by hour. And here we have it. And you say, okay, hour, we have to divide these by 24 to get days. And you might be asking, okay, so why not put day directly in there? Sure, you can do that. So that would be the improvement that you can do to, for example, this measure. Here is put in hours and 24, you could actually put days directly. Fine. But that's not what we're looking at. Do you see that when index is zero, you don't get anything here? So if that is not a problem for you, you have your measure. So you don't need to have the if function. But if you want to have a zero here, that is what you should have, then this is where the second part of this statement is doing. So what it's basically doing is says if table five index is zero, then return this date to this lookup value. Okay. So then when it does this minus this, it becomes zero. You could also do that in here and say, if this is blank, give me a zero. But because we are doing this on one shot, we will go back into the lookup value. No, sorry, into the ah, the diff. And here, that's what we would write. If, of course, we are not doing there for, start date is always the same. This is here is where we need the if. Uh, index is equal zero, then give me column one. Otherwise, give me the lookup value value. And of course, you need to close the if statement there and remove that. And then you get the exact same calculation. And uh, of course, you don't want to have a calculated column just for that. So you would go in here, copy lookup value and replace here with the lookup value you created. And suddenly you have the same measure that Lydia presented on the um, community post. So now you can actually understand what this measure is actually doing. It's great, right? And you can apply this technique to any DAX measure. The, the tricky part is to know where to start when you have like these huge DAX measures, but just slice it in pieces and soon enough you'll see what the measure is doing. And it is especially difficult when you're getting a complicated DAX measure that you have not built yourself. Because when you're building it yourself, you build by blocks and then you understand what you're doing at, at any point in time. But when you just get it, you don't exactly know why. For example, it is not that intuitive to know why this if statement is there. But if you just deconstruct the DAX measure, you can say, okay, I don't want to have a blank value. I actually want to have a zero. I want to have an actual value. So I really hope that this is uh, helpful for you for all the future help you'll get. Um, I just want to uh, take the opportunity actually to encourage you to really thank the people that are contributing in the Power BI community because it takes a lot of time actually to, to answer a question, especially depending on how much effort has been put into explaining what you actually want to do. Um, 
So before I leave you for, you know, you start your weekend and, and I can start my weekend, I just would like to, to show you one thing. And um, this is a blog post that, hmm, some pre, um, I'm, I'm sure you know him if you are asking questions in the Power BI community because he is like really, really, really active. And he actually wrote this, it was quite a long time ago. You can see it here. But what it does is it goes through what it takes to get a question answered quickly in Power BI, or I would say answered at all, you know? So the more information you uh, give, the easier you have that your question will get answered. And it goes through, you know, like certain things that it should be great, like post in the correct forum, don't post on multiple forums at the same time. Be, be nice. He says the, the vast majority of the community are volunteers with day jobs, which is true. Post sample data, really important, because it takes time to generate the data for that particular example, so it helps so much. And if you don't post sample data, chances are that unless it's a very easy question, you will not get an answer. Put in a nice format so it can be copied, includes relationship formulas. Uh, yeah, so I will actually post a link to his blog post because it's very, very good. And if you follow his specific instructions, you will actually get answered very, very quickly. And uh, remember to, to actually click on solve and click on thanks <laughs> when somebody helps you because it, it it does take time to do it. So, I mean, one of the things why Power BI is so great is due to the community, to, to all of us chipping in and helping each other. So, uh, yeah, I, I just wanted to say that it was important. But now it's time to start our Friday. So today's video ran a bit longer than usual. I hope you are still with me. Um, if you are uh, and you like this video or this type of video, let me know and I will continue doing more. Uh, and you can let me know by liking it or just posting a comment. Either will work. Uh, if you know somebody that will benefit from this video, just please share. Comments, questions, suggestions about it, let me know on the comment box or the social channels listed below. And make sure you subscribe because I publish Power BI videos every Monday, Wednesday and Friday. And Friday, as you can see now, it is especially for DAX and DAX measures. Click the bell to receive notifications when I publish a new video and uh, have a great, 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 great weekend. See you again on Monday. Bye.